What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad to be here today because today I'm talking about all the ways to relieve back pain when you have a spinal cord injury. We're going to talk about hidden causes of back pain or especially one hidden cause that your doctors probably aren't telling you about that could be causing all of your pain or a significant amount of it and most of your suffering and then we're going to talk about daily tips and tricks that i use when my pain gets just a little bit too overwhelming how i kind of stop the the cascade of uh the pain cascade is what i would like to call it and then i'm going to dive into my full back health protocol that has left me not pain free but completely pain managed. I mean, I'm in a really, really good place pain-wise, the best place I've been in in the last three and a half years, and I wish I had known everything that I'm about to relay to you in this video the day I got out of the hospital. It would have saved me immense amount of pain and suffering. So if you or loved one has a spinal cord injury or some neurological deficit and is suffering from major pain issues. I promise you, you're going to get value out of this video. Watch all the way to the end. There's juicy meat all throughout. And uh, my the protocol that I go into in the last section, it w has been an absolute game changer to me. And I'm really, really excited to share it with you. So first of all, a little bit about my injury so you know where I'm coming from. Uh, T10 paraplegic and I was in a car accident where I flipped a truck through a telephone pole at 80 miles per hour. My back was against the ceiling and it crushed my whole spine. I mean, I had about 20 fractures, three major displacements, uh, one spinal cord injury, obviously, and uh, broke every rib on the right side of my body, punctured my lung, lacerated my liver. Uh, my whole body was just crushed on this on this right side in the back. Uh, I all the muscles, or a lot of the muscles in my back got crushed as well and had to be removed. And I had to have this intricate muscle flap surgery, kind of piecing piecing the my back back together. And then I got a spinal fusion where I got uh, metal hardware from I think C3 to T6. Ooh, no, C3 to T3 and then T7 to L3. Pretty sure that's what it was, but I'll include pictures. So uh, it was something right around there. I got two separate fusions because uh, my whole spinal column was just in, it was obliterated. And then on top of that, I got a staph infection throughout the whole thing caused much more pain and basically it led to me being wildly addicted to opiates as well as rampantly using benzodiazepines, nerve pain medications, muscle relaxers, antispasmodic medications, everything, uh, Ambien and other sleeping, sleeping drugs, anything to just numb and kill the pain. And that is going to lead me into my first section of this video, and that is hidden causes of pain that your doctors might not be telling you about, and that's the medications they're giving you for the pain. Uh, I know a lot of people don't want to hear it, and just hear me out. I'll make this section quick, and we'll get into the tips and tricks and actionable like physically actionable things, but this is huge. I mean, this is the biggest thing you can possibly do to alleviate your pain is to get off the painkillers. Now they're causing your pain, I promise you. You can't have your cake and eat it too. If you numb it now, it comes back later twofold. That's just how life works. Painkillers are great for acute conditions, but chronically they just don't work. And I have tried all of them in mass and can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm in the least amount of pain when I'm not doing anything to alleviate it as far as medication goes. It's just the way it is. I don't use anything on a daily basis. I mean, nothing to relieve the pain. And it every day I go without things, it improves it gets better and better and i've gone back and forth i've slipped back in to using 
uh, different pain relieving medications, whether they be over the counter ones or prescription ones, and they just make it worse. People that are using them are don't like to hear it. They can't imagine living without them, but I promise you, you throw away that Lyrica, that Gabapentin, that, you know, all the opiates. The opiates are the worst. I mean, those are absolute trash. A known fact in the medical community that chronic opiate use leads to chronic pain. It's just the way that opiates work inside your body. But all of them are bad. None of them are helping. That includes Tylenol Aleve, Ibuprofen. You just got to get rid of all of them. And it sucks. Uh, you lose a Band-Aid, but that's all you're losing. It's just a Band-Aid. It's not fixing the problem. So let's talk about getting to the root of the problem and how you can put those painkillers away and start living a more and more pain-free life today. My pain relief starts first thing in the morning. The right when I wake up, sometimes I have to sit there for a minute and muster up the willpower to sit up through the intense pain. I have intense spasms as well in the morning and I hurt when I wake up. I mean, I hurt bad. I am aching, throbbing, just in a lot of pain, no matter what position I sleep in, how I position myself, how I put pillows or what I do. I, I am looking into maybe replacing my mattress with a lot firmer mattress. I think I have a pretty firm mattress already, but I think that might, I might even need to go a step further as finances allow. For now, I wake up in a ton of pain and what I do right away is I sit up and I long stretch. I touch my toes, stretch out my hamstrings, stretch out my you know glutes, lower back, lats, shoulders, at that whole posterior chain, give it a good stretch and then swing my legs over the edge of the bed. When they hit the ground, they spasm intensely and I kind of just let that spasm play out. And rather than present it, I am grateful for it and try to just let it shake, shake my body loose, start warming my juices up a little bit. Then I hop in my chair, get dressed pretty much immediately, take my dogs outside and start getting the juices flowing, start moving start pushing my wheelchair along and I hyper kind of exaggerate my pushes and just start warming my body up because movement is your friend. Movement is going to do more than anything else to, to alleviate that aching, throbbing pain. After I, I, I get moving and get my dogs out while they run around in the grass, I do 10 ground touches. Like I lean forward and I touch the earth with my hands and I push myself back up as unassisted as possible. I can maybe, you know, on a good day in the afternoon, hoist myself back up. And that's taken a lot of work, a lot of strength and conditioning. But in the morning, I certainly can. I'm just too weak or whatever. Um, so just do as little assistance as possible and tighten all those muscles up. Engage whatever muscles you got in your back that are working, the lats, the everything, and just lift as much as you can. I do that at least 10 times and kind of inhale, lower down, exhale, inhale, pull back up. And I kind of just, I do different variations. That's not, that's not the prescription exactly, but I focus on my breathing and do 10 up and downs. Then I take my dogs for a nice long walk and really get my body moving. And that's like my non-negotiable morning routine that I do whether I am going to work or going to the beach or going to whatever. I just be at home all day, uh, going to go to the gym, gonna go to physical therapy, it doesn't matter. I do that every morning, it gets things flowing and it's awesome, it's nice. And then some other things sprinkled throughout the day that I do to help uh, alleviate my back pain if I'm not doing like specific back pain uh, protocol relief uh, work. I will, after I use the bathroom, like I'll, after I take my dogs in and everything and maybe go to the gym, I'll use the bathroom. And when I'm done going to the bathroom, I lay in bed to get dressed. And what I do is I wrap up a pillow really tightly and I just put it under my lower back as I lay back and I lay and get a nice uh, back stretch. And I reopen my body for the first time since waking up. I just open my body back up since it's been closed and in the chair all morning sitting down. I wanna give it as many times throughout the day of just fully stretching that spine out and opening back up. And this is something you're gonna have to experiment with. I've built up to this. It was 
you know, just putting a pillow back there was extremely intimidating at first. It took me um, using this little ab mat thing just on the bed and then a pillow just on the bed to a pillow on a harder surface uh, after I would do my breath work in the morning. And then I graduated to a pillow on the hard carpeted ground and then a pillow on my hard deck outside. Then I just recently have started using a yo yoga block underneath my back and that's uh, that's an even better stretch and then you'll see in the protocol what I've graduated to but that's something that is is worth doing if you're having a lot of pain stop you know and just take a break lay down if you can and put something under that back and get a nice little back stretch it really seems to help me out a lot and so and another thing Cobra is good Child's pose is amazing. Get in child's pose as much as possible. But if child's pose or cobra is too much, just get prone. Lay on your stomach for a little bit and build up to it. You know, it was everything I could do when I first got injured to get over onto, like, onto my front. I, it took me, that took time. Like, for the first, you know, I could do it, but for the first couple months, I was out of the hospital. It was intimidating. It was painful. It was like grinding of bones and crunching. I mean, it was, it was terrible. And I will say when I first started to stretch my back backwards, when I was in a therapy place that I go to down here called CORE, the Center for Recovery and Exercise. It's an amazing activity-based training place here in Orlando. Check it out on social media and definitely come train there if, if you get a chance because they're, they're awesome. But uh, I digress. When I first started doing like back bends, they put me on this like crescent shaped pad on top of a vibration plate. And when I would lay on it, I mean, there would be horrific crunching and cracking feelings and popping feelings. And I just kind of, I kept quiet about it because I didn't, what are they going to, you know, what they, what are they going to say? Either do it or don't do it. You know, I, I, you have to be the judge of that. They don't know what's happening in my back. I didn't know what was happening in my back, but it was really uncomfortable and scary because it would be like crunching, clicking, nasty sounding uh, pops and stuff. And it was just because my back had been basically growing into this, into this misshapen forward posture and it was undoing it. And it had all that concrete um, was in there sealing it together. So I, I do have to say I had all the hardware removed because it was uh, highly infected. So I got the hardware taken out like nine months after getting injured. And that was a whole huge surgery. And that's a topic for another video about leave the hardware in, take the hardware out. I've got some strong opinions about the hardware being a source of pain. I think it definitely causes uh, more pain, but you have to really know who you're going to be in the future because if you remove that hardware, um, you know, you're going to have to do a ton of work to make sure you strengthen your back and stabilize it. And if you're not going to do the work, you want to leave that hardware in there because you don't want it degrading. So uh, that's a whole nother debate for another video. But the point is, I don't have the hardware in. And so all that concrete and like solidified whatever they do that bone concrete that they put in there to hold all the fractures together like that was probably just cracking and breaking and releasing for the first time um and it was intense and it was it was scary but i figured you know fuck it i'm already paralyzed like how much worse how much worse can i get <laughs> you know it wasn't happening too badly in in my neck because that's obviously it could get worse but um yeah so Let's hop over to my computer where I'm gonna go over my personal back pain relief protocol that I do on a weekly basis that has offered me tremendous, tremendous relief and nearly a completely pain managed life. I don't wanna say pain free. I have pain freedom, but I still have pain. But uh, if that doesn't make sense, then I'm sorry. But the bottom line is let's go over this protocol and and check it out. All right, hopping right into it. I like to do this in my gym on a nice hard floor. Um, and I just go into laying flat after being in the chair. That in and of itself with some deep breaths is uh, a really good 
warm up back stretch and you know, might, might get some cracks and clicks just from that. And I lay for about two, three minutes, whatever feels good. And then after that, I'll hop into some beauty queens just to wring that spine out and keep warming it up, keep the juices flowing or get the juices flowing uh, rather. And I'll do 90 seconds at least on each side as not represented accurately by this clip because uh, I have respect for your time, but twisting is as much as my, uh, my fusion allows, which is, um, you know, about 90 degrees, my head getting about 90 degrees to the side. It'd be nice if you go 180 degrees and I could look backwards, but we're not quite there yet. And then I do a nice forward hamstring bend. Again, just loosening everything up, getting that posterior chain prepped for uh, for some back bends and th you know this is something you want to approach with caution I've been training for this for a while not this next thing but this you know this whole th I mean I guess this whole thing but um, so get in the uh, I will get in the prone position and then I'm going to just take myself through a few Cobra Childs. So once I get the uh, the knee the knee positioning right, which is always actually one of the one of the most difficult parts, is just getting up into this position called quadruped. And yeah, just go down. And ideal world, my hips would actually be able to go to the ground here. So that's how far I've got to go. I've got a lot of work to do. Able body person can get their hips onto the ground if they're, um, you know, just average flexibility, I think. And then this, you know, I could go, could go lower, but this I'm really focusing on stretching out the lats and I'm just gonna pull back and forth through here. This is just a warm up, and, you know, I didn't wanna spend too much time showing Cobra Childs because I think it's it's pretty self-explanatory, but this is fantastic workout and just great for the back, the body, everything. Um, it, it's something I try to do absolutely every single day, even if I just do a few in, in bed before I change or before I go to sleep, or I don't ever do them when I wake up. I should, uh, but my partner, uh, my girlfriend Kelsey is normally sleeping and probably doesn't want me flopping f flopping around in bed trying to trying to stretch out at 4 or 5 a.m. when I when I get up most days so you get the gist of that um, you know I'll bring myself through four or five of those uh, minimum and then flip around and and get myself adjusted for the first back bend and possibly the last if you're just getting started on this this is going to be pretty intense this was i mean i can't speak for anyone else but this was very very intense for me the first time i did it and honestly pretty intimidating lots of cracking and clicking and pretty pretty painful but i certainly reaped rewards afterwards and it's worth noting that the first uh, few times I, I did all this, I, I was pretty sore afterwards. So I, I, I just didn't show uh, most of that. Uh, you know, I did sit there for, for a couple minutes, but I didn't want to make you sit there a couple minutes and me stretch my back. And then I will turn it horizontal and uh, move the block up a little bit towards kind of the center of my back and just get a nice upper back stretch. And this is you know, this one's really intense. This is definitely something, um, you know, to build up to. At least it was something in my case I had to build up to. But it feels absolutely amazing. And, you know, eventually I would like it if my shoulders could could touch the ground again. But we'll, we'll see the progression. I haven't been, uh, you know, I've been building up over the course of time, doing this on pillows, doing this on 
uh, crescent moon pad at the gym that I do physical therapy at. So yeah, and then again, just moving it up a little farther right in between the shoulder blades. And this is a bit of a balancing act since it's turned up on its end. But yeah, this is just fantastic. That forward head position and shoulder position that we're in as wheelchair users all day. This is just reversing all of that as you know, it's it's mitigating it for sure. And then uh, you know, I will have done each of those blocks for at least 90 seconds, more like two to three minutes to really stretch my back out and get it warmed up. I don't hop straight into this next one lightly, but it's worth noting, you know, use what you have around to make transfers and stuff easier. These yoga blocks are fantastic for, uh, for transferring on and off your wheelchair. If you have one of those little yoga blocks, you can turn it up on end or um, on the side, like I have it stacked there with two, and it makes for a great handhold to, to help yourself transfer up. So this is, uh, you know, I use this thing because uh, my gym has it available, this little step up workout thing, but this could be done in all sorts of different ways. You know, you, uh, a bench, a small, you know, the end of your couch, an ottoman, a, you know, the end of your bed. There's lots of ways to improvise this. I've just found that this thing is amazing and puts me in a really, really good position and also, uh, you know, really pushes the, the limits. And I'll be sore, you know, this is something trying to do two to three times per week, but I'm sore for a couple days after Final Fusion. Fusion. This is two, really two pushing my And I have no idea how, you know, how safe this is. I'm not a doctor or a physical therapist. All I know is it feels good. And so just gonna try to get my body into a nice arched position. And the reason I'm going slow is because, I mean, it, this is a really, really intense stretch and it's pretty painful to, to start out with, but as my body gets used to it, it really is relieving. And again, probably did that for about, probably about three minutes because I love that one. It feels really good. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to scoot the block farther underneath me. So it's right underneath my pelvis. I'm going to lift myself up, kind of set the top of my butt on there and then lay down so that the back of my neck kind of lands on the edge of that that step and this is going to give me a as deep of a back stretch as uh, my body is currently capable of it's gonna you know that's definitely maxing out and feels so incredible it feels like it's just reversing you know three and a half years of that forward posture and it's incredible. I can't recommend it highly enough, but again, I have no idea what anyone's personal situation is. For my body, this is peak capability. This is as much as I can do and it's taken me a few months focusing on back bends and also uh, near constant physical therapy and different types of exercise. So yeah, it will spend a, a couple minutes in this position I might go up and down, I might do it a couple of times, and then I will, you know, hop up and kind of call that good. Oh, I might fall off the thing, actually. But I'll call that pretty good as far as back bends go. And after I do that, just to compensate, I will do one nice long forward stretch for at least another 90 seconds just to elongate and stretch out all those vertebrae that were just crunched together. So the next part is an optional part that I put in there that I don't do all the time, but has helped me tremendously. I've done this a few different ways. Uh, one way I've done it is from a half yoga ball, and that way I think is a little bit safer than what I'm about to show you here. This is huge, I think, for foot drop, stretching the whole posterior chain. This is one of my favorite movements. And so I'm using the blocks here, but you really need something similar. You can use books, 
I had some some push-up bars I used at one point. I think I failed. Yeah, that was pretty painful, but uh, a good representation of what can happen. I actually tore uh, my adductor, I believe it is, doing something similar to this with the uh, half yoga ball involved. So beware. It, it's you got to be careful. Uh, and definitely warm up. I didn't warm up that time when I tore my adductor. And so here, you know, just letting my myself get get warmed up in this position as, as best I can. Stretching that whole posterior chain. I mean, and groin and just, it just stretches everything. It's just a really great position. Yeah, I, I think it does a lot to just open up your body and stretch out your legs in a way that they don't get all that often. So yeah, that's the that's the frog squat and okay, so that's my basic back pain relief protocol. The only other thing that I obviously incorporate in there is weekly back workouts, pull and push workouts at the gym of of any description. Band work is great. Well, that's it, and thank you so much for joining me for another video. I love you guys, and hope that this has, hope this has been helpful. And I will, I'll, I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.